Hi everyone. Well, we've got loads of footage from our travels around over summer. So we've got loads of them to show you uh, over the winter months. But we thought we've, we'll show you some aspects of the boat. Because you know, like we've done boating now, as I've said that enough now, but we've done it for a while. And we thought it might be a good idea to show you some of our ideas and designs uh, on the interior of the boat but it won't be a walkthrough because that's been done to death and I don't think you need uh, all of it but every now and then we'll do a video and just show you some of the things what uh, what we've come up with uh, we know we know it's uh, you know we're not being um, like big headed about it but we do know that we've managed to design and get a quite a special boat now uh, and i just thought it might do uh, it might be nice for some of you to see uh, what a proper bespoke interior could look like so uh, this is the first one and intermittently between uh, between some of our travels we'll keep we'll keep putting these up but uh, this is the first and there'll be a few more coming over the uh, the late autumn and winter months. Now the first thing uh, we want to talk about is the reason we designed the interior like we did. And this is quite involved this because people are under the misapprehension that if you have portals it's completely dark <laughs> but that's not strictly th true that if you design your interior right and also as you're looking ahead here now these are, um, are our bow doors and you notice they're not they're not the glass ones uh, they're the uh, fancy roses and castles but they have a a unique feature as well um, there's no scumble it's uh, it's done with all solid oak but the outside of it the dirt color that is a wood called Utele and that is really hardy wood which doesn't deteriorate if it gets wet if oak or some of the other lighter woods get wet and that barrier of varnish breaks down you start to get this white or black rising up from the bottom it won't happen with that design at all they'll look as good as they are now and they'll look just as good in 20 years time but that's all to do with design and that's part of, of yeah. what we've got this is the next little bit those are our portals uh, which are solid brass as well by the way, they're not the annealed stuff, it's proper solid brass and they all open and we have ten of those uh, but again round the portal because you could get condensation or anything like that that again is utility wood which doesn't like I've said deteriorate and um, that'll look like that as long as <laughs> as long as we want them to um, and uh, they uh, also look a nice contrast to the uh, American white oak that's what we've got in the TNG now this is something we come up with uh, when we're within design mode as well uh, we have the portals and the wood around the portal so we call these our portal speakers because we don't like uh, these plain speaker fronts or anything on the woodwork um, and these are the speakers are behind which are really good for what we want to use them and we've got six of these speakers uh, through the boat uh, we have four at the front to give us like a surround sound and two at the back uh, which we can listen to when we're in uh, bed or when we're going along. Now, 
these speakers again were designed with you Taylor with the fronts and it complements the, the systems we've got uh, within uh, our boat and I'll go into more detail with them later now the next thing I'll just show you these are called uh, prisms and what they do particularly when it's uh, sunshine as well they let light flood in uh, into the boat and again we've got the utility wood round it and we've got these we keep it dark in the in the bedroom and that but at the front of the boat in the galley and the l-shaped seating and at the front where the saloon is uh, we've got one in each place uh, so we've got three of those and they don't half let the light flood in and uh, keep it quite bright so that's another one of our designs to make certain that uh, our boat can remain very bright inside even though it's got portals now this is where uh, the interior design uh, is set off uh, besides our uh, stern and bow doors having the uh, roses and castles and the dirt wood we've got three side hatches as well at the front of the boat which allow privacy they allow us to keep warm and they also allow lighting if we want it and the other thing is the colour breaks everything up as well so you have all them colours and it, it just breaks uh, everything up in the boat and that's all to do with design and uh, how we have worked through our experiences but there's different things and I'll show you I'll just show you a few things as it is if you look at them I'll show you them shortly these uh, like doors at the front the glass doors these open onto there and I'll show you them shortly and they they can open up but if we just want everything uh, standard with the glass closed as you can see you just have the glass closed everything's closed up you still see all the colour and uh, it's quite effective when you've got your lighting on and everything it looks really nice so that's the standard all closed up as much privacy as we want because that's the other aspect big windows you lose privacy and when we are on board we like it being private as you can see here now we're at, we are in the marina at the moment and our neighbours both so, but our side hatches now we've opened these completely so <clears throat> they can let we can you know if you want to talk to people and that people can talk through there no problem at all uh, when we're out and about uh, they can be opened they're very close to the water as well these uh, you can put your hand down onto the water with it being a tug star boat because uh, they're proper big uh, side hatches but um, they can also be used to let light in and if it's very warm the airflow as well and we have that addition with 10 opening portals as well so they can be open like that and uh, like I've told you the these um, the, the windows or the glass doors they can open and they just let uh, let all the light in and any cool breeze in the middle of summer like I say we've got three of those and the other type is that we've got the windows closed but still the side hatch is open on the outside so we can still get all the light in but it also allows us to have the warmth as well because they stop all any wind say it was in winter and that so we do uh, through design we can have three side hatches open uh, at the front of the boat which let the light flood in and the boat is very bright inside but we can also have it nice and snug uh, and private as well which was part of our initial design thoughts because uh, we are not fussy on people poking their heads into the windows when you're moored up uh, plus you struggle a bit more with condensation and again I'll talk about that shortly as well 
but uh, that uh, that are our three side hatches, which do make a huge difference. So this is the American white oak, what we have on the side. This is just the final part of this first vlog. And if you look carefully, all this wood up and down here, all this is good solid thick wood. Uh, no matchboarding or thin pieces, it's all solid, solid oak and very thick, as you can see. So that's the American white oak. Now down here, on the floor, this is English oak. It's more knotty, this. Now, underneath that, on the burrs, uh, is 20mm marine ply, and then the solid oak planking is 20mm um, thick as well. So that floor is 40mm thick. So it's all very high quality, that. So that's our that's our first little uh, look at some of the interior features on our boat. Like I say, it'll not be a walkthrough. We'll just do something and put it up in between our vlogs, which we've still got plenty of where we've travel, been travelling around and that. Um, but what I didn't say when I was doing all that is all the wood we've chosen, so it's English oak, American white oak and Utaley wood, uh, all this wood was kiln dried so that means all the moisture's out of it and you have a lack of movement in the wood then when it's fitted and none of our under the gunnel on the roof or the cabin sides is all T and G we didn't want uh, panelling or anything like that uh, it's got to be solid wood uh, and uh, it's all throughout the boat that and uh, we're, we're quite pleased with that so that's that done and dusted that's a wrap and uh, we'll see you on the next one where we'll discuss further uh, other features unique features and uh, type of fittings and that we have on the boat thanks for watching we'll see you soon This is one of them lovely lopsided uh, cottages or houses, whichever you want to call them. But they are uh, lovely. And the other thing round here now, it gets very, very quiet as uh, winter starts to arrive because you would have lots of work to do if you were coming up here now and uh, going through the locks. It's a bit different in winter. <laughs> but uh, it is very nice round here in, uh, in autumn. It's, uh, it's a lovely setting. You can see all the leaves stirred now. These leaves, they're a pain when you're going along because they do get around your propeller and you have to keep reversing. They're just starting now, but shortly these will be everywhere. But like I was saying, it's a lovely setting here. And uh, there's still a few boats moored up, and no doubt uh, 
going into Ardlam and are frequenting the, uh, the pubs. And this is a little shop what sells all lots of little knickknacks. Uh, this is the Ardlam Mill. This is a canal shop and workshop. Can look carefully here now. That's a very nice uh, setup inside as well. Our friend had a, had a, a display here as well of his artwork. Uh, the guy's named Eric Gaskell. And he had his exhibition here as well. Um, a more unusual look at canal art is the best way to describe Eric. And they do some really good books. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I like Steve, uh, Stevie uh, Airwood. That's another one I've got. I recommend these books. Very entertaining. Narrowboat Nomads, this one. And it's excellent. Again, early in the season, we were here going up to start our, our trip up the Ardlin flight. Oh, it's quite magical. We're up in autumn, or late autumn. It's, uh, it's a really nice setting round here. It's uh, a proper, should we say, it embraces canal garden uh, more than a lot of villages do. It's a nice place. I think this particular lock causes more grief than any of them on the Oregon flight or probably any on the uh, locks on the uh, Lock to Union. It's not too bad now but you look over there and you can see the bywash. Now that's nice and gentle at the moment. But if that was busy, you know, if the locks were busy, that would be flying out. And it's that bad that if you come and loop here, because boats were going over into the wall and hitting that earth, we've had to put this wood piece in. So that that takes the impact rather than the brickwork. Because that goes absolutely crazy at the uh, in busy times. And you've always got to be aware of it. 